Hey all and welcome to another long awaited tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you the process I used to create this awesome little escalator that actually works. Watching this small set of stairs forever circling around is somewhat mesmerizing. I could stare at it for hours. So let's not waste any more time and get started building. As you can see, this model was entirely designed using Tinkercad. Tinkercad is a fantastic and free online program for stuff like this, and it's perfect for beginners to get started 3D modeling with basic shapes and structures. A lot of the design process is quite repetitive and involves a lot of tinkering and adjusting on the model to get things to fit. I won't bore you with the entire design process, suffice to say that many, many hours were spent designing this model. I'd guess that over 100 hours were spent in Tinkercad during the designing process. What you see here is the final completed project. In reality, as the build progressed, I 3D printed and laser cut parts and test fitted them as I went. Having to readjust and reprint many times until I ended up with the perfect part. To 3D print, you can select the item and automatically duplicate it by holding Alt and then drag the item. I orientate the item so that it sits flat and rename it so that I can keep track of all the different items. There are roughly 50 separate components, not including all the individual stairs and links. With the item highlighted, I click export and select STL. Now you'll have the item downloaded, ready to print. When downloading the files for laser cutting, you'll need to select and drag the part. Orientate it flat with the work plane. Pressing D will drop the selected item down to the work plane surface. To download an SVG file for laser cutting, you'll need to have the item intersect with the floor, which means you'll need to increase the width of the part and then lower it down so that it penetrates through the work plane surface. Now we can name it to keep track of all the parts and then with the part selected, click export and this time select SVG. Now you'll have a file that will work with the laser cutter. 3D printed parts are loaded into the slicing program, orientated for printing and then sliced. Some parts will need support material, however I've designed these parts so they can be printed directly onto the build plate. 3D printing is done using their Bene 4 Mono from Nova 3D. This printer is a true workhorse, and a project like this wouldn't be possible without a good 3D printer. After a couple of hours, the 3D printed parts are ready. Parts like the motor mount that were printed directly onto the build plate are pretty well ready to use. However, some details like the cassette spaces that were printed with supports needed a bit of post-processing. Supports need removing and a little bit of sanding is required to smooth the bottom of the part. Using a flat sanding table is really useful for parts like this. Resin sands very well and is easy to overdo. Just make sure to avoid breathing in any dust from the sanding process. Also, some parts have locating pins, so be sure to leave these attached. Now for some laser cutting. Clear acrylic sheet is my favorite material when it comes to laser cutting. It's safe to cut and cuts very well. I just make sure to mark the edges so when I load up the laser cutter program, I can see where the sheet of acrylic is in the machine. The laser cutter I'm using is the BMO from Flux. It's a 30 watt desktop laser cutter and perfect for hobby projects. It's very user friendly and so far I haven't had any trouble using it. Using the BMO laser cutter is as simple as loading the SVG file from Tinkercad, then take a snapshot of the cutting surface. The built-in camera will photograph the selected area. As you can see, it's nearly impossible to see the clear acrylic but if you look carefully, you'll be able to see the black edge markings. Once the SVG file is positioned appropriately, the power, speed and number of passes are set. I tend to keep the power low to preserve the life of the laser. I'll generally opt for a low power setting with two passes rather than a high power setting with one. Now we press start and wait roughly seven minutes. I always monitor the laser cutter as it's cutting, so that if anything happens, I can quickly turn it off. Especially when cutting paper or cardboard, just in case it catches fire. Acrylic is very safe for laser cutting, 
and it's ideal for model building as well. Now that we've got all the parts ready, they can be assembled. I've included a hardware list on my website for those who want to give this project a try. I'll also have all the files available to download as well. Just check the description for a link. All the screws are 3mm width. This was the first attempt at assembly so there was bound to be some problems. And as you can see here, I had some problems. The beauty of building your own models with a 3D printer is when stuff like this happens it's no big deal. Just make the adjustments and print a new one. Take 2. Even this version was changed a bit later on. The motor for this is a Robots own 19 RPM 12V geared motor. However, it seems they aren't available anymore. You'll still find the same motor from Servo City though. The motor is pressed into the mount and screws lock it in place. The driving gear is press fit onto the motor shaft. A tension roller is used to reduce the slack in the stair links. So the rollers roll smoothly, I used some 5x8x2.5mm RC bearings with flange from Plague Bearings. Altogether I used 10 bearings. A small piece of evergreen styrene, 4.8mm tube fills the gap between the bearings and a 3mm screw threaded through the roller and 3D printed spacer. Once the back is tightened down with the nut, friction between the two 3D printed parts will hold it in place. To ensure a tight fit, the openings for the bearings were printed slightly small. That meant a small amount of filing was needed to get a snug fit. Now they can be fitted onto the roller shaft. A small threaded section at the top of each shaft accepts a standard 3mm nut. However, because the resin is very brittle, it's very easy to over tighten the nut and crack the resin. So I 3D printed several of the shafts, just in case I had plenty of spares. The links used to make the track changed multiple times. These ones here were about version 5, and even then these links changed a few more times. Nevertheless, these links were still useful to be able to test out the workings of the motor. Just after that test, the steps were changed to a wedge design. Then following that test, the links were redesigned to reduce the wobble. It's a constant stream of design, test, redesign, retest and so on. Eventually, if everything goes to plan, it will be an improvement each time. The new step design added a second pivot point which helped immensely, however it also doubled the number of links and rods. Basically, each link has an alternating short and long rod. The long rods hold the step. Each rod is a piece of 0.9mm piano wire. I 3D printed templates and small tools to help with the assembly and to ensure accurate placement of each rod. A drop of superglue holds the rods in position. With the final link and step design complete, all we need to do now is test fit the decorative parts that will hide the mechanism and then paint them. Acrylic doesn't hold paint so well, so make sure to lightly sand each part that we'll be getting painted beforehand. For the parts that are attached, Weld On 3 is the best cement for acrylic. It acts fast and makes a good permanent bond. Just remember it's quite potent, so be sure to wear a mask or work in a well ventilated area. I simply used spray paints for this project. They are fast and easy to use. Once painted I used the Micromark Liquid PSA to attach the pieces. The Weld On 3 is a little aggressive on the paint and by using Liquid PSA I can avoid having paint runs and bubbles from any excess Weld On 3 that could potentially run. Liquid PSA is really useful stuff. Just apply a small amount to one piece and wait for it to turn clear. Then press the two parts together firmly and it will form a very strong hold. The handrail was also laser cut and painted separately. This is a very thin piece of acrylic so be careful not to snap it in half while applying it to the model. During the build I always perform a quick test whenever a new part is added, just to make sure nothing is catching or causing problems. The spaces for the outer wall ended up a couple of millimetres short, but instead of 3D printing completely new spaces, I just glued some washers to the end raising the spaces just to the right amount. And again each time a new part is fitted, I test the functionality of the model. So far it's looking good. 
The steps are ready to be painted a metallic silver, again using a spray paint. I try to batch paint these because there are 72 of them. Only the top and front sections of the step that will be visible need paint. I want to avoid getting paint on the back of the step because this is where the step pivots around the piece of piano wire. I want that area as clean as possible to avoid any chance of gunk building up and causing friction. Weathering for each step is done with Starship Filth Oil Wash, thinned down with enamel thinners. I apply the wash quite liberally over the steps. I'm not overly worried how much is applied at this point, just make sure to keep the back of the step clean. After about half an hour, or when the enamel thinners has evaporated, I wipe off any excess oil paint with a paper towel, leaving behind the paint trapped in the recesses of the steps. Now hopefully for the final time, all the painted steps are placed onto the pieces of piano wire. While testing again, I noticed a couple of short piano wire rods had slipped. Some of them hadn't had glue applied, so before I went any further, I made sure to add a drop of super glue on all the pieces of rod. In addition to the glue, I also add some plastic safe lubricant. This will help the links pivot freely and also help with the smooth running of the gears. Next, the front wall is painted and assembled just like the back section was. Once all the screws are attached and screwed in, locking all of the steps in place, the final wall piece is glued into position using the liquid PSA. What makes liquid PSA great for this is that it can be pried apart if needed. To hold the battery pack, I laser cut a small enclosure that can be screwed onto the back of the cassette. It's basically an open box to hold the battery and the switch. The switch is press fit to the top and the battery pack is hot glued down in such a way that I can access all of the screws. The wires are soldered onto the motor terminals, making sure to get the polarity the correct way around. These escalator steps are for up only, for a downward rotating escalator, a new step design is needed that can retrofit into the current design. The last little detail are the foot plates to hide the edges of the escalator as each step falls away. These are applied with a very light misting of spray adhesive on the back. For the top foot plate, the paper needs a slight upward bend. That way the steps won't catch on the paper and cause the paper to scrunch up. And that completes the build. For those of you wanting to give this project a try, I've added all the files and a parts list to my website. The link is in the description. I've also made public the original Tinkercad file so you can make adjustments and changes as needed to suit your own custom designs. You'll also be able to make changes to the dimensions because not all laser cutters and printers have the same tolerances. I hope you enjoyed watching this project come to life and if you'd like to help support the channel, be sure to subscribe. Cheers and thanks for watching.